So um, may we create the cause to meet Shakyamuni Buddha and his teachings and every life from now until enlightenment. And may all of the wishes of all of our individual centers be swiftly fulfilled. So may all Dharma centers flourish and be a place of healing and transformation, wisdom and action. And may all of our work lead to enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. Sangye chudon sogi chunam la janchu padu dani kapsuchi dagi jin sogi pe sonam ki rola penje sangye drupa show sangye chudon sogi chunam la janchu padu dani kapsuchi Dagi jin sogi pe sonam ki, rola penje sangge drupa sho, sangge chudon sogi chunam la, janchu padu dane kapsuchi, dagi jin sogi pe sonam ki, rola penje sangge drupa sho. and establishing the field of merit by the power of the truth of the three jewels of the inspiration of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the great might of the completed two collections and of the pure and inconceivable Dharmadhatu. Let this place where the deity host of the peerless king of the Shakyas and their entourage are to be invoked become a perfectly pure Buddha land created through the previous special vows of the teacher, the king of sages, with qualities of splendor like those of Lord Amitabha's land. Let its ground be of the nature of manifold jewels, as even as the palm of the hand, broad and spacious, soft and pleasant to touch, immaculate, bright, spread with manifold heavenly flowers, with sweet fragrance of snake's heart sandalwood. Their borders are built of jewel tiles, their banks strewn with powder of gold, silver, and pearls, covered with graceful swaying utpalas, kumundas, lotuses, and adorned with various water birds. Sweetly calling and joyfully soaring and hovering, let lakes, ponds, and pools with the eight properties make it beautiful. Let wish-granting trees of jewels bending and swaying beneath celestial gems, garlands of pearls, pendant jewels, nodding blossoms, and beautifully formed fruit, with the sound of true dharma coming from the ringing of little golden bells, stand everywhere and adorn it well. So let the perfect pure ground appear. In its center, let there be a palace arrayed with the seven precious things most brilliant, emitting powerful beams of light that completely fill measureless worlds of the limitless extent, containing infinite different well-proportioned dwellings of the sphere of those who have completely transcended the three realms, arisen from the superior roots of virtue and those who have transcended the world, marked by the utterly pure and dominating knowledge, the abode of the Tathagatas with the community of Bodhisattvas, frequented by infinite gods, Nagas, Yakshas, Gandavas, Asuras, Garudas, Kinaras, great serpent demons, human beings, and spirits, fixed in joy in the taste of the Dharma and great bliss, causing all the goals of every sentient being to be attained, free of every stain of harmful defilement, bereft of all Maras, a place of the manifestation of Tathagatas, excelling the manifestation of all things, a vehicle of detachment from samsara through mindfulness, wisdom, and great realization, and quietude and insight, entered by the door of deliverance, emptiness, signlessness, and wishlessness, resting on an array of king of jewel lotuses adorned with infinite qualities. Let the great palace appear. In its center, let there be gathered a lotus seat on a precious lion throne for the peerless teacher, the king of sages, and seats for all the rest of the Tathagatas of the 10 directions and the bodhisattvas, here Pratika Aryas and their attendants, 
These palaces are in accordance with the special vows and might of each aria. All beautiful, let them appear. Everywhere, outside and in, in accordance with their high status, let it be entirely filled with manifold, excellent, perfect requisites of gods and human beings, such as foodstuffs, clothing, ornaments, and music, as described in the Sutra of Three Heaps in the Vow of the Conduct of Bhadra. In whole oceans of clouds of offerings, let it be adorned with ornaments. Let all the Aryas take their seats, transform these offerings into suchness, accept them and enjoy them. And so take a minute and think of the offerings you have on your own altar. The offerings set out in all of the Dharma centers all over the world. And then imagine multiplying them countless times so they fill all of space. And holding this idea, we add the offering cloud Durrani. Om Namo Bhagavate Vajrasava Pramadana Tathagataya Ahate Samyak Sambhuraya Tayata Hom Vajra Vajra Maha Vajra Maha Tira Vajra Maha Vira Vajra Maha Bodhi Tira Maha Bodhi Mandopasam Kramana Vajra Savakama Avarana Vishadana Vajra Soha Om Namo Bhagavate Vajrasava Pramadana Tathagata Yahate Samyak Sambhura Tayata Om Vajra Vajra Maha Vajra Maha Tira Vajra Maha Vira Vajra Maha Bodhi Tira Vajra Bodhi Mandopasam Gramana Vajra Samakama Varana Vishadana Vajra Soha Om Namo Bhagavate Vajrasava Pramadana Tathagataya Ahate Samek Samburaya Tayata Om Vajra Vajra Maha Vajra Maha Tira Vajra Maha Vira Maha Bodhi Tira Vajra Maha Bodhi Mandavasam Gramana Vajra Savakama Varana Vishadana Vajra Soha By the power of truth of the three jewels, of the blessings of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, by the power of the great might of the completed two collections and of the completely pure and conceivable sphere of reality, may all these offerings become just so. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merits of practicing giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merits of practicing giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge in time enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merits of practicing giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. May all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings never be separated from the happiness that knows no suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from attachment and anger that holds some close and others distant. And repeat the four immeasurables to yourself, letting them mix with your mind. and invoking the merit field, lighting incense if you have some.
Perfecter of ocean-like sets of non-attachment, faultlessness, interpretation, all inclusion, undistraction, unconfusion, method, power, vows, and wisdom knowledge, homage to you. Mindfulness, efforts, the basis of psychic power, the supreme faculties and amazing powers, the enlightenment factors and the aria paths, all those you duly realized, homage to you. In the three countless eons completing the 10 stages, to tame the gods you became into Shida, the excellent being known as Vetaketu, you infinite merits, homage to you. Knowing it was time, you happily entered the womb, were born from the womb, engaged in youthful sports, went, went, went forth and lived in practices of austerities, realizer of all benefits, homage to you. Beneath the Bodhi tree, you overcame with a mind of loving kindness, Mara's force. All the conquerors of the 10 directions gave you empowerment. O oh, great hero, homage to you. Having won the five super knowledges by the supreme Bhadra-like Samadhi, you gained the unsurpassable awakening, leader of the world, homage to you. Abandoning all stains and their impressions, your wisdom knowledge grew completely full. So you're the whole world's refuge, even the gods, perfect Buddha, homage to you. You gain the triple kaya, bodies of great bliss and wisdom, with five certain features and with the elaboration stilled by nature, and shown in all form for others, homage to you. Your body, gleaming like the king of mountains, gives off infinite light just like the sun, and shines all round with marks and signs, unparalleled protector, homage to you. With the true words of Dharma eloquence, of excellent meaning, you proclaimed your lion's roar that fears no listener, all bedecked in 60 qualities, homage to you. You of the five wisdom knowledges, clear, unobstructed, of non-abiding equality, source of virtues, achieving all good for disciples, free of all concepts, Lord of the world and nirvana, homage to you. Discoverer of all virtues, worldly disciples, of the rhinoceros-like and conqueror's children, common and superior supreme teacher of samsara and nirvana, homage to you. Though you are free from all the bonds and fetters, by infinite miracles that fulfill your vows, you benefit beings as long as samsara lasts, sole friend of all beings, homage to you. Turning the excellent precious dharma wheel of dharma. You discipline beings very hard to tame, and fix disciples in the three liberations, possessor of the ten powers, homage to you. Knowing the season of your disciples' fortune, you entrusted the doctrine to the Aryas, and manifested nirvana in Kushnagara, putting an end to sorrow, homage to you. That being's merits might yet be increased. Your remains were turned into heaps of relics, serving as basis for the whole world's worship, you whose deeds are ceaseless, homage to you. Once, Lord, when you took birth as a Brahmin, not bearing in compassion the misery of a tigress and her cubs, you gave, gave your body, healer of afflictions, homage to you. Once, when as a King Sibi you were born, without regret you gave away all you owned, to a blind Brahmin both your eyes you gave, you who made the blind see, homage to you. Once when you were king of Kusala, recalling your previous life, you said, behold, this vast result of giving but some sour gruel, teaching people pure true dharma, homage to you. When you were the merchant heroic in giving, Mara, unable to bear it, created a fire pit. Courageously, you crossed the pit of fire and made offerings to an Arya, homage to you. When you were the merchant Ashkavaya, the gods to taste you made all your goods disappear, but cutting grass and selling it with its price you still sustained Maniti, homage to you. When born as a master hare, you taught your followers Dharma and to feed a hungry Brahmin leapt into a fire yourself. Then Indra took you and showed to you all this marvel, homage to you. 
Born as a Brahmin, living in forest austerities, though for three days a god took your austere food, still you gave without regret or attachment, living on joy of samadhi, homage to you. Born as King Mitrabala, with love you looked after all beings. With your own flesh and blood, you fed five yakshas, saying, when I'm a Buddha, I shall give you nectar, homage to you. Born as Prince Vishtatara, you gave all your cherished away, including your wealth, elephant, son, and daughter. By fearless giving, you made all beings happy, homage to you. Once born as a righteous king, you saved the lives of countless animals, not allowing their sacrifice. All your people you fixed in the law of 10 virtues, perfect in generosity, homage to you. When born king of the gods amidst a battle with the Asuras, you caught sight of a bird's nest and saved the young bird's lives, disregarding your own. Keeper of morality, homage to you. When you were born a Brahmin, your master told you, Brahmins in distress are allowed to steal, but you replied that stealing was improper, perfect in morality, homage to you. When you were king of the Sibis, your minister offered you lovely Udmadati, but you said, though it cost me my life, I'll not commit adultery. Keeper of pure morality, homage to you. When you were a great sea pilot, by true factual words, you overcame the ocean's abyss and satisfied all desires with manifold jewels. Superaja, good crossing, homage to you. When you were king of fishes and little fish were harmed by lakes drying up and various birds, you saved them by true words that made it rain. Skillful, compassionate one, homage to you. When you were a quail, a forest fire encircled you, but by speaking true words, you turned it back, saved countless beings' lives and made them happy. You with the strength of truth, homage to you. Once when you were a shakya, king of the gods, seeing a king in his court undone by liquor, you taught them by skillful transformation and set them in virtue. Matchless, best guide of beings, homage to you. Once, Lord, when you were born a wealthy Kastidya, urged by attachment, perceiving the faults of desire, you abandoned all enjoyments of samsara and took the pure going forth, homage to you. Born into an illustrious Brahma line, you abandoned all wealth to meditate in the wild, made bad conditions the path, gave up the thought of harming, and taught your companions the Dharma, homage to you. Once when you were treasurer to a king, when you heard your virtues proclaimed by others, you gave up this life and joyfully went forth, perfect in morality, homage to you. Born a Brahmin, you left home and went forth, known as Chundabodhi. Slighted by a king, you angered not, but welcomed him patiently and taught him homage to you. When born king of geese, when caught in a snare, you had no fear nor wrath. But with skill and courage for King Brahmadatta and his attendants, you turned the wheel of Dharma, homage to you. When you were the wanderer Mahabodhi, many abused you, but you showed patience, not wrath. And to the king in his court who held wrong views, showed the true way things are, homage to you. When born as an ape, you carried up on your back a man fallen over a precipice. When this wicked man returned harm for kindness, you were patient outstandingly kind, helpful rescuer, homage to you. When you were born through compassion, a Sarabaha beast, the king attacking you fell into a chasm, but mounting him on your own body, you lifted him out. Sole friend of migrators, homage to you. When born as a Ruhu deer, through your compassion, you saved an exhausted man swept away by a river, bore his betrayal and turned the wheel of Dharma for king and his retinue, homage to you. When you were a chief of monkeys and an army assailed your monkey tribe, in your compassion, you made your body a bridge and saved the tribe. Astonishing great being, homage to you. When you were the ascetic, Kashabadin, though a king had your body cut into pieces, not wroth with him, once more in your compassion, you repaid good for injury, homage to you. <clears throat> Born as Lord Brahma gods, in compassion you taught Agyadina, holder of evil views, the deep law of cause and effects dependent arising. <clears throat> you are beneficial in all ways, homage to you. Born an elephant in a dreadful world, dreadful wild, in mercy, not bearing the plight of 700 people, a king had banished. You gave up your body to feed them, perfect in patience, homage to you. 
Worn as prince, I go, iron health dweller, sick of samsara and driven by detachment. You strove in the practice of bodhicitta and samadhi, perfect in dhyana, homage to you. When through compassion, you took a buffalo's body, you bore a monkey's insults and taught some gods profound dependent arising of cause and effect. You so perfect in wisdom, homage to you. When through love for beings, you took a bird's body, you cured tormented lion and taught some gods the good path that pleases the conquerors. O matchless supreme guide to beings, homage to you. Through infinite existences like these enjoying insatiability, like an elephant bathing, difficult deeds for others, you were enlightened. O compassionate teacher, homage to you. And so we just pause and think about those past lives of the Buddha the different manifestations that he took, the different ways he supported sentient beings, thinking all of this shows us our potential, shows us the perfected form of our mind. And feeling great respect, great devotion for this being who came to be known as Shakyamuni Buddha who taught the whole path to enlightenment, then we make offerings. Flowers grown on land or water, not possessed by gods or others. In this place or another place, I present you chief of sages. Every excellent incense tree in this or another's place, gods and others, marvelous incense, I present you chief of sages. Light from dazzling noble gems or produced from shining trees, from suns and moons and so forth, set out in all parts I offer. Perfume from fine fragrant trees in this or another place, I send out to every region and present you, Lord of Sages. Sending out clouds of the finest offerings, seas of jewel nature, jewel mountains and so forth, to all regions I make offerings. Troops most fond of play and pleasure laughing, graceful and so forth, the most joyful every, anywhere, I'll send out to every region. Sources of adornments, clothes and so on, like wish granting trees, I reciting Vajra mantras offer unto all the Buddhas. Generating bodhicitta for all sentient beings sake, sending it to every region, I'll make offerings to all Buddhas. Through my offering the perfection of giving, may sentient beings all achieve wealth and abundance. May their happiness lack nothing. Let all beings be established in their vows and bodhicitta. I send everywhere the calming of great faults like violence. May the suffering of malice, fear, and other things be calmed. May yogins in friendliness practice dharma selflessly. Let me not reach Buddhahood till samsara meets its end. May all sentient beings too practice with such energy. Let all creatures great defilements such as greed be pacified. Let all beings undistracted be possessed of the four dhyanas. May pure by applying wisdom, great wisdom of Buddha's gnosis, best cutting suffering, may all beings be pure Buddhas and the mandala offering. Vajinka mugyo ahom vajra bhumi ahom vanchan sege saji om vajra reke ahom chi chari ko yogi ko eyosu liya gya pori ram shalu papu alo zambulik nu balan chua ja Nudalopa nayab dam nayab jen yodan dam lam chodro dramin in the dramin in gita rimpo she ri wo pa sam gishi and dojo yoba mamo pae loto kolo rimpo she nobo rimpo she sumo rimpo she lampo rimpo she lampo rimpo she tacho rimpo she mapo rimpo she techempo e pumpa ge ma triwa ma lu ma ga ma me to ma du pa ma nan sa ma dri cha ma ni ma da wa rimpo she du 
Greeting water pools from seas of learning, flowers of virtues, incense clouds of morales, lamps of wisdom, perfume lakes of faith, best umbrageal foodstuffs of samadhi, sounding symbols of melodious praises, raised umbrellas, banners, flags around, of compassion, judgment, and quick wits, decorate my body's storied palace. This I offer, Dharma lords, to you, steadfastly abiding in the broad-petaled lotus drop amidst my heart. I request with truly longing mind, may it always please the world's gurus, may it always please the kings of Dharma, so that henceforth until Bodhi, your compassion's hook will sustain me. I make offerings in faith, please accept it and inspire me. And the confession? With folded hands, I beseech the fully awakened ones present in all directions and the greatly compassionate bodhisattvas. Whatever sin I, a brute, have committed or caused others to commit in this life and others throughout beginningless cycle of existence, and anything in which I have deludedly rejoiced, thereby harming myself, that transgression I confess, overcome by remorse. Whatever offense I have committed out of disrespect with my body, speech, and mind against the three jewels, against mothers and fathers, and against spiritual mentors and others, whatever terrible vices I, a sinner, defiled by many faults, have done, O guides, I confess them all. How shall I escape it? Rescue me quickly. May death not soon creep up on me before my vices have vanished. Death does not differentiate between tasks done and undone. This traitor is not to be trusted by the healthy or the ill, for it is like an unexpected great thunderbolt. I have committed various vices for the sake of friends and enemies. This I have not recognized. Leaving everyone behind, I must pass away. My enemies will not remain, nor will my friends remain. I shall not remain. Nothing will remain. Whatever is experienced will fade to a memory. 
Like an experience in a dream, everything that is past will not be seen again. Even in this life, as I have stood by, many friends and enemies have passed away, but terrible sin induced by them remains ahead of me. Thus I have not considered that I am ephemeral. Due to delusion, attachment, and hatred, I have sinned in many ways. Day and night, a lifespan unceasingly diminishes, and there is no adding on to it. Shall I not die then? Although lying here on a bed and relying on relatives, I alone will have to bear the feeling of being cut off from my vitality. For a person seized by the messengers of death, what good is a relative and what good is a friend? At that time, merit alone is a protection, and I have not applied myself to it. O oh, protectors, I, negligent and unaware of this danger, have acquired many vices out of attachment to this transient life. One completely languishes while being led today to have the limbs of one's bodies amputated. Parched with thirst and with pitiable eyes, one sees the world differently. How much more is the one overpowered by the horrifying appearances of the messengers of death, as one is consumed by the fever of terror and smear smeared with a mass of excrement. With distressed glance, I seek protection in the four directions. What good person will be my protection from this fear? Seeing the four directions devoid of protection, I return to confession. What shall I do in that state of great fear? Right now I go for refuge to the protectors of the world whose power is great, to the Junas who strive to protect the world and who eliminate every fear. Likewise, I earnestly go for refuge to the Dharma that is mastered by them and that annihilates the fear of the cycle of existence and to the assembly of bodhisattvas as well. Trembling with fear, I offer myself to Samadabhadra, and of my own will, I offer myself to Manjagosha. Terrified, I utter a mournful cry to the protector Avlokita, whose conduct overflows with compassion, that he may protect me, a sinner. Seeking protection, I earnestly invoke noble Ashkagarbha, Siddhigarbha, and all the compassionate ones. I bow to Vajri, upon the slight of whom the messengers of death and other malevolent beings flee in terror in the four directions. After neglecting your counsel in terror, I go for refuge now as I face this fear. Swiftly remove my fear. Even one frightened by the fleeting illness would not disregard a physician's advice how much more so one afflicted by the 404 diseases, of which in just one can annihilate all people living in Jambuvipa, and for which a medicine is not found in any region. If I disregard the counsel of the omniscient physician who removes every pain, shame on me, extremely deluded one that I am. If I stand very attentive, even on a smaller cliff, then how much more so on an enduring chasm of a thousand leagues? It is inappropriate for me to be at ease thinking just today death will not arrive. The time when I will not exist is inevitable. Who can give me fearlessness? How shall I escape? I shall certainly not exist. Why is my mind at ease? What of value has remained with me from earlier experiences, which have disappeared and engrossed in which I neglected the counsel of spiritual mentors? Upon forsaking my relatives and friends and this world of the living, Alone I shall go elsewhere. What is the use of all my friends and enemies? In that case, only this concern, appropriate for me day and night, how shall I surely escape suffering on account of that non-virtue? Whatever vice, whatever natural misdeed, whatever misdeed by prohibition, I, an ignorant fool, have accumulated. Terrified of suffering, all this I confess, standing with folded hands in the presence of the protectors and vowing repeatedly. By the guides, be aware of my transgressions together with my inequity. O oh, protectors, may I not commit this evil again. And so you generate the mind of confession, thinking that all of these very heavy words like sin or brute or evil, this is all just referring to negativity. There is no need to identify with it. We're just noticing mistakes to be mistakes remembering cause and effect and letting our mind be very honest about the habits of faulty behavior that we might have in the hopes that we catch them in the future and prevent them. 
that we purify them now and so don't suffer when they ripen, preventing them ripening. And so you can think from Shakyamuni Buddha in the space in front, streams of white nectar light flow from his heart to your crown. White light flowing down and through you, purifying body, speech, and mind. And think that all of these mistakes, all of this negative karma was simply the result of ignorance, of suffering, all of which is removable. And then you shift to rejoicing and you think, Whatever merits all conquerors, Buddha children, Pratyekas, Arya's training and past training, and worldly beings have throughout the 10 directions, I rejoice in all of them. So you start with your own merits, the positive karma that you've created, the beneficial habits that you have. Notice and value them. and then rejoicing in the actions of the people in your life, those you like, those you dislike, those you're indifferent towards. Just think about the positive actions of ordinary people. And in this way, maximizing your own merit, as well as cutting any potential for jealousy. So just think of some of the people in your life and rejoice in their positive actions. and of all worldly beings. Everybody in retreat, everybody offering service, everybody studying devotedly, everyone who has right livelihood, whose work is benefiting society, different charitable organizations and nonprofits who have genuine altruism at their heart. The positive work of other religions besides our own. And we rejoice in the actions of hearers and solitary realizers, those practitioners of the Pali tradition who work so hard on ethics 
and concentration. And we rejoice in the actions of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas with their infinite abilities, their omniscience, their impartial goodwill, their non-biased compassion. And then specifically our own gurus, people like His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, Lama Zopa Rinpoche, all of our other precious teachers. And then we do the two requests, creating the cause for our teachers to show the aspect of long life to stay and to teach us until samsara ends. All you lights of the worlds of the 10 directions who have awakened to Bodhi and realized non-attachment, I urge all you protectors to turn the unsurpassable wheel of Dharma. Those who wish to demonstrate Nirvana, I request with folded hands to stay for eons as many as the atoms of the lands for all beings happiness and welfare. Whatever little virtue I have gathered from prostrating, offering, confessing and rejoicing, urging and requesting, I dedicate it all towards awakening. And so now visualize that a stream of golden light, the essence of which are the excellent qualities of the Buddha's body, speech and mind, descend from the Buddha's heart, flows into you and into all sentient beings around you through the crown of your head. So that nectar light changes from white to gold, the gold indicating the stimulating of blessings, of realizations. And think that infinite good qualities permeate every part of you. And just concentrate on this blissful experience of receiving the blessings and inspiration of the Buddhas. And hold that awareness while reciting the mantra. Jaya Mune Mune Maha Mune Soha Jaya Om Mune Mune Maha Mune Soha Jaya Om Mune Mune Maha Mune Soha Jaya Continue the mantra under your breath, together with the visualization. Tayata om mune mune maha mune soa. Tayata om mune mune maha mune soa. Tayata om mune.
Jayata Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Soha. You do all that's good for beings and grant cities in accordance. Please go to your Buddha lands, but come back again later. Great compassionate lords, and it's good that you benefit us and all sentient beings, but please go miraculously with your retinues to your respective lands. Homage to the seven Buddha heroes, Vishnapashin, Sikhin, Thisabhatu, Kakra Chanda, Kanaka Muni, Kashyapa, and Gautam Shakyamuni, through the hardships I've endured, formally for being's sake, and through my renouncing pleasure, may the doctrine flourish, since I've given my livelihood for the sake of sick people. So pr protecting needy beings, may the doctrine flourish long. Through my giving son and daughter, wife, wealth, jewels, elephant, and my chariot for awakening, may the doctrine flourish long. Through my giving honor to Buddhas and Pratika Buddhas, hearers, parents, and ascetics, may the doctrine flourish long. Through my tasting diverse sufferings for many million eons and seeking learning for awakening, may the doctrine flourish long. Through my long-kept morals, vows, and penances, and worship of Buddhas of the Ten Directions, may the doctrine flourish long. Always firm, outshining others, through past energy I've had, for all sentient beings' sake, may the doctrine flourish long. Through my bravely keeping patience, always bearing evil beings, in decline of beings in Klesha, may the doctrine flourish long. Through my practicing samadhis, as many as Ganges sands, and dhyanas, liberations, formless trances, may the doctrine flourish long. Through my past austerities, kept in woods for gnosis sake, and teaching many treatises, may the doctrine flourish long. Through my giving up my flesh, blood, and life because of love, and giving limbs and minor parts, may the dharma's method prosper. Through my past full loving ripening of sin, fixing them in the triple vehicle, may the best gift dharma grow. Through my saving beings from wrong views, to establish them in right view, once I've method and wisdom, may the doctrine, may the dharma prosper. Through my freeing beings from Klesha's fire, with the four attractions and subduing growing evil, may my followers stay long. Through my saving Tertikas from flood of other views, fixing them in right view, may my followers be faithful always. May the doctrine flourish long. That the Dharma King's Sankapa's Dharma method may prosper. Let all adverse signs be stilled and good conditions be complete. Thanks to my and others join two collections of the three times. May the doctrine of the conqueror Lozan Drapa flourish long. Highest, best teacher, greatest of the great, son, lord of the conqueror, the Dharma conqueror, through your inspiration, quell harmful foes, the Maras and all kinds of hindrance, day and light, be our auspicious seat of prosperity. Highest, best Dharma of true reality, nectar of true Dharma truth, through your inspiration, free us from faults. Let our good collections develop. Day and night be our auspicious seat of prosperity. Sangha, shining splendor of precious qualities. Buddha children, true helpers. Through your inspiration, quell our defilements and sufferings. The foes that torment us. Day and night be our auspicious seat of prosperity. Giving charity, keeping morality. Practice of patience, undertaking energy. Concentration, realizing true mode of being, let us here and now have the blessings of these six. <laughs> May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that is not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. The wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, 
the incomparably kind Supreme Tenzin Getso, may you have a long life and all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. You who uphold the subduer's moral way, who serve as the bountiful bearer of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading Manjinath's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplish magnificent prayers, honoring the three sublime ones, savior of myself and others, your disciples, please, please live long. And for the long life of all of our teachers. And we remember the emptiness of the three spheres that the agent, the action, the object, all lack inherent existence because they dependently arise. Okay, so you can relax your attention. And uh, thanks for coming. Please excuse my flubs, I should have worn my glasses. <laughs> and um, have a really beautiful holy day. Thank you so much, Venerable. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.